fuck that lady. Fuck that fucking bitch. I would sh- I would I would look at her and scream, fraud, liar. You ain't black. That's what I would scream at that bitch. I really would too. Yo, my, I made this video for my sister. She knows I ain't lying. <laughs> for real. And I, and I would record that shit and upload that shit. Only been told from one perspective. When it comes to the Montgomery... And I have a right to be this aggressive. I don't like being fucking tricked. I don't like my brain being fucked with. I don't like my brain, you knowing you're forming a human being at eight, lying to me so that you can form the human being that you want. No, fuck you. Fuck you. I take shit personal because everything's personal. Boycotts in the civil rights movement of the 1960s, one would assume that those in charge would preserve history and commend those who pushed the movement for equality forward. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case, as evidenced by the story of Claudette Colvin, a young black girl who was the first person to refuse to give up her seat to a white woman on a bus. That's right, before Rosa Parks, there was Claudette Colvin. Parks was chosen as the face of the Montgomery bus boycotts for a variety of reasons leaving Colvin largely forgotten about amongst civil rights leaders, the city of Montgomery, and the general public. Colvin took a stand for what she believed in, and it's a shame that her inspirational story is hard to find in the history books. I'm Symphony Thompson. And I'm going forward with this, because I haven't really seen much of this. I I, I saw it yesterday, but I, I didn't finish it. I just saw, oh man, this, the, the, you know, the internet's not censoring this no more. Um, uh, they can't censor it because the people that taught me this, everyone putting this out, the person that made this video, they're all black. I learned the, 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 my racist shit. I'm learning this shit from, I live in the South. And I talk to old people. When you talk to an old motherfucker black from the South, he's going to tell you some shit. He's going to tell you some shit, dude. You know what I'm saying? So it was, it was, you know, it was only a matter of time before this shit got out because, you know, blacks are a protective species right now. You, know, you can't fuck with them too much. You know what I'm saying? But if it, if it was just Hispanics pushing this or whites, this would have never got out. And this is a story you should know. While a student at the segregated Booker T. Washington High School in Montgomery, Alabama, Claudette Colvin took the bus home frequently. Due to segregation laws at the time, seats in the front of the bus were designated for white passengers and seats in the back of the bus were for black passengers. Blacks were also allowed to sit in the middle, but if one white person wanted to sit in the middle, then all the black people in that row were supposed to get up and move further back. But on March 2nd, 1955, when a white woman walked onto a Montgomery bus without anywhere to sit, the bus driver Robert W. Clare demanded that Colvin and three other black women move to the back. The other women moved, but Claudette did not. Reflecting- The thing about history that I've noticed is when you try to make like, a, like when I watch a movie based on, on, on real life, and then I watch the movie I like, and then I go and I study real life. Real life, like most of the time, is more impressive, more dope, more violent, more, more, more beautiful. Okay? Look at this little girl, how beautiful this little girl is, bro. Come on, man. A 1960s little girl from the South. She's beautiful. She's really black. You know? Look at this woman. Look at Rosa Parks. It's like Rosa Parks was not part of the real black culture you know but anyway I'll, I'll continue on that day Calvin said all I remember is that I was not going to walk off the bus voluntarily if it had been for an old lady I would have got up but it wasn't I was sitting on the last seat that they said you could sit in I didn't get up because I didn't feel like I was breaking the law However, after the Colorado white woman COVID entered the that. bus, another black woman, Ruth Hamilton, who was also pregnant, got on the bus and sat next to Calvin. He asked us both to get up. Mrs. Hamilton said she was not going to get up. So it wasn't just her. It was, it was, it was, it was Mrs. Hamilton and there was more ladies too. You, you, you guys will see if they bring them up, if they bring them up. But, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, let's keep going. Up ...and that she paid her fare and that she didn't feel like standing. So I told him I was not going to get up either. So he said, if you're not going to get up, I would get a policeman. When the cops arrived on the bus, they convinced the black man to give up his seat for the pregnant Hamilton. Colvin still decided to remain in her seat and she was taken into custody. Philip Hoos's book, Claudette Colvin Twice Toward Justice, tells the story. That's a beautiful story. I'm pregnant. I'm not getting up. Fuck you. Okay, not some old bitch. 
Well, anyway, anyway, I'm, I'm gonna ruin it for you guys. I was about to tell you the, what I know, but don't hear it from me. Story of Calvin and further detail. The policeman grabbed Calvin and ushered her off the bus. She didn't fight back, but continued to scream, it's my constitutional right. It's my constitutional right to sit here as much as that lady. I paid my fare. It's my constitutional right. Calvin was taken to City Hall. Now, if you know your American history, in the 60s, you know that's how a black person would sound. Blacks were so smart in the 60s. You know, now, they're not, now that they're not smart now, they're just very, way less educated now. They're not even in the same universe. In the 1960s, people wanted freedom. So, they knew their rights. When Martin Luther King spoke, he pointed at the Constitution. She pointed out the Constitution. In real life, when you're fighting for your rights in this country, you point at the Constitution. Rosa Parks didn't point at the Constitution. She didn't scream. It's my constitutional right. I wonder why. Could it be because I've been just a fraud and that story never happened? Am I ruining it? Maybe. Let's see. She was charged with misconduct, resisting arrest, assaulting... I can't get over the fact how beautiful this girl is. I can't get over the fact how just historically accurate she just looks like this would be a statue of this little girl somewhere look at that little girl right there and tell me that there shouldn't be a statue of her somewhere for doing what rosa parks claims she did along with the nwacp now check it out being a police officer and violating the city's segregation laws going back to her feelings on that historical day she said it just killed me to leave the bus. I hated to give that white woman my seat when so many black people were standing. I was crying hard. The cops put me in the back of the police car and shut the door. All the ride long, they swore and ridiculed me. They took turns guessing my bra size and cracked jokes about parts of my body. Colvin was- You see that disgusting thing that, that little girl went through? At 15, cause she was 15 when that happened. Huh? Basically rape, to me that's rape. All right, all right. When I tell a little girl and I'm a cop, oh, what's your bra size? How, oh, your ass. You, you know, because she's not gonna go into it. A very educated girl from the '60s said, talked about my body parts. But I'm sure they were saying horrible things to her, you know. And 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 where's her peace? Where 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 where's her recognition? She's a hero. Eventually released and went back home. Upon her arrival, her neighbors surrounded her with support. But I was afraid that night too. I had stood up to a white bus driver and two white cops. I had challenged the bus law. There had been lynchings and cross burnings for that kind of thing. It would have been easy for the Klan to wow, come up the hill that. in the night. Dad sat up all night long with his shotgun. We all stayed up. Gangster. Gangster. Now that's another thing that I keep hearing from these Southern dudes, bro. Like, I was specifically talking about a cook that's no longer with us. Uh, there's a guy that I follow on the internet that's an old crazy motherfucker, right? Um, books. Not, books. Um, Thomas Sowell is a guy that I respect deeply. He happened to be in the 60s. And that boy will tell you things and you're like, what the fuck? You know, this... Um, my point was, I forgot what my point was. Um, let me see. There were women lynching and crossing. Oh, yeah, with the shotgun thing. Okay, so my thing was that, check this out. Dad sat up all night long. Wrong with, with shotgun. shotgun. We all stayed we up. All, all right, I, all right. So what happens with that is that I've heard that from like four different people already. I heard that from Candace Owen. I heard that from Jesse Lee Peterson. I heard that from Leroy, a personal friend of mine, right? And I read that in Tom Sowell books. Blacks are not standing around getting fucking lynched. Do black people look to you like they're gonna stand around and get fucking lynched, bro? They were shooting motherfucking KKK guys with shotguns, bro. They will run the KKK niggas out their hood. Why don't we say that? Why don't we say, yo, look, man, KKK niggas was getting shot the fuck up too. 12 gauge, bah, open chest. I've read about that shit. Okay, right now there's a gang war going on. I think it's in Memphis with the Cribs and the KKK. KKK get fucked up by black people too, man. That set up all night long with a shotgun. We all stayed up. That's how it used to be. They would stay up and run those boys out and kill those motherfuckers sometimes, right? Just putting things into perspective, you know? You gotta, you gotta say the blacks fall back. Or you take that from them, man. You're taking their manhood and only look like you're making them seem like this. Oh, we can't do anything. We can't fight back, you know. 
It can't be no dark little girl that said, no, fuck you. It's gonna be a, a half Native American because probably because she's whiter, you know? Ridiculous. I'll stay up. When time for trial finally came, Colvin pleaded innocent, but was found guilty. She was released on indefinite probation in her parents' care. As the guilty verdict came in, the black leaders in Montgomery knew something had to be done to initiate change. I told Mrs. Parks, as I told other leaders in Montgomery, that I thought Claudette Colvin's arrest was a good test case to end segregation on the buses. However, the black leadership in Montgomery at the time thought that we should wait. Fred Gray. So why did some black leaders think this way? It was partly because of her color and because she was from the working poor. She lived in a little shack. It was a case of bougie blacks looking down on the working class blacks, Gwen Payton. Not only that, but according to an article in the National Women's History Museum website, because Colvin was a minor and Parks was an adult, Parks seemed more trustworthy as the face of the movement than Colvin. Parks had a lighter skin, which was considered more socially acceptable at the time. In the end, it was Colvin's pregnancy that caused several black leaders to not use her as the face of the movement. Black leaders believed it would not be good if the face of their movement was an unwed teenage mother. An article in The Guardian titled, She Would Not Be Moved, describes Colvin's situation as a personal tragedy for her was seen as a political liability by the town's civil rights leaders. Author of Parting the Waters, Taylor Branch wrote, even if Montgomery Negroes were willing to rally behind an unwed pregnant teenager, which they were not, her circumstances would make her an extremely vulnerable standard barrier. So that's complete bullshit because you saw that they rallied around her as soon as she got home and you saw the pictures of it, just rewind the video. So they're lying because they want money and power and they're fucking racist because they're racist against her because she's young and because she's dark. You need to pick someone that's lighter with fair skin. So these are blacks being racist against darker blacks. And there's literature on this. It's full of that shit of lighter blacks shitting on, on darker blacks. So not only did Mrs. Claudette Colvin got discriminated against by whites for doing the right thing and by the and by the American establishment, by the white American establishment, she got shitted on by her people. They manipulated her to thinking that she wouldn't be back to and obviously she was back as soon as she got home. She wasn't white enough. Bougie blacks looking down on dark blacks, that my friend is called racism. That is called racism. Okay? Black motherfuckers are racist too, and you're, and you're seeing it right now. Racism cuts, that shit cuts right through butter, through, through, any, through any culture, bro. So get the fuck out of here with that shit. If the white press got a hold of that information, they would have had a field day. They call her a bad girl and her case wouldn't have a chance. Who cares? They call us a punks a fucking nigger. They were not gonna, that's this, this right here. If you, if you have any sense of how humans work and when someone's trying to make money and sound nice, you know, the democratic specialty, this is what it sounds like. Makes no sense. You think a white southerner is going to care if you're light or black? Motherfuckers, look at me, bro. I've been called a straight N with a rolling R by the fucking cops, all right? My nigga, I've been called a porch monkey, all right? The judge has told me, when the fuck are you going to get out of this fucking country? You know what I'm saying? A racist guy don't care, bro, if you look like me, if you look like 50 Cent. You know what I'm saying? If, 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 if they don't, if you look like Meghan Markle. So this makes no sense. Especially in the, in the, in the, in the Jim Crow era. They were not going to give a fuck how light you were. They didn't like Italians for the love of Christ. Italians were fighting for their rights. This makes no sense, bro. Rosa Parks. When asked why she thinks Rosa Parks gets all the credit when it came to the refusal of giving up your seat, she said that the NAACP and other black organizations felt that Parks would be a good icon because she was in a- I have a problem with this picture right here. These people also need to do the research more. I may know about more about that than these people put in this video because if you know your shit, you wouldn't put up this, you wouldn't put this up because um, the NAACP and, uh, and the MLK had a big rift. They just, they, they just didn't support each other. The only thing they did together, as far as I know, right? Um, is in his I Have a Dream speech, Every single black organization came together to, to, to form that, to get a lot of people going, right? 
because he was the spearhead of, of the movement. But everybody did it through all their own pockets. You know, you had the you had the Louis Farrakhan's, you had the the the, the all Sharpmans, you know. They had a different organization, but Martin Luther King was his own guy. So this right here, he didn't have anything to do with the NAACP uh, uh, shitting on Miss Coven and giving all the credit to some Indian lady. An adult, and they didn't think teenagers were reliable. Colvin also added that Parks had the right hair and right look. Her skin texture was the kind that people associate with the middle class. She fit that profile. Mrs. Parks was a married woman. She was morally clean and she had a fairly good academic training. If there was ever a person we would have been able to use to break the situation that existed on the Montgomery city line, Rosa L. Parks was the woman to use. I probably would have examined a dozen more before I got there if Rosa Parks hadn't come along before I found the right one. Ed Nixon. Remember that piece of shit. Ed Nixon, civil rights movement. And union organizer. Union organizer. That's the Obama. That's what Obama did before he became president. That's what you guys chose. A union organizer to run the country. Oh, man. Union organizers, don't. They're, they're, they're not good people from what I've seen. That's what they do. They lie, deceive. A union organizer needs uh, needs conflict. And why is he there? Once there's no conflict, you're useless. Yeah. So fuck a union organizer. According to sources, Rosa Parks was thrown off the bus on a Thursday, and by Friday, had several supporters and activists championing her. The Guardian article says that Colvin isn't bitter about the situation, but when she was a teenager, she did. Well, of course they're gonna support her. That's what you push forward. But you know who got supported without you pushing anybody forward? Mrs. Claudette Coven. This beautiful girl, this beautiful lady, when she got home, the whole neighborhood supported her. The reason why the NWACP found out about that, because this is a stupid, it's just a stupid arrest, you know, in a big ass country, is because people made a big deal about it. But instead of going with the real rage, now they put her to the side and grab their own person for their own political agendas have feelings of resentment, sadness, and even bewilderment. They just dropped me. None of them spoke to me. They didn't see one. Ed Nixon. According to sources, Rosa Parks was thrown off the bus on a Thursday and by Friday had several supporters and activists championing her. The Guardian article says that Colvin isn't bitter about the situation, but when she was a teenager, she did have feelings of resentment, sadness, and even bewilderment. They just dropped me. None of them spoke to me. They didn't see if I was okay. They never came and discussed it with my parents. They just didn't want to know me. It would have been different if I hadn't been pregnant, but if I had lived in a different place or been light skinned, it would have made a difference too. They light skin keeps coming up, man. I don't know what you would call it if it isn't racism. <laughs> Literally, based on your skin color, they make decisions The NWACP, right? No different than the KKK. I'm sorry. They would have come and seen my parents and found me someone to marry. Once if her skin was lighter, okay? They would have still worked with her if her skin was lighter. So it wasn't the pregnancy thing. You see how, they, you, see how you break down the bullshit? That it's just about money getting? Now, look at this whore. You could tell, bro, I've been arrested mad times, bro. That is not the way you look when you're arrested. You don't look like that when you're arrested. And I wasn't a guy that didn't give a fuck really about going to jail. And I looked a little bit more concerned than this whore. An obvious fraud. Look at how staged that shit looks. Everything is... I don't know, man. Very hostile to Rosa Parks. And very hostile I am. Parks became the face of the movement. Colvin was more or less forgotten. She told reporters that she sometimes attended rallies at churches. I would sit in the back and no one would even know I was there. To make matters worse, Calvin's son, Raymond, came out as a light-skinned baby. He came out kind of yellow, and then I was ostracized because I wouldn't say who the father was, and they thought it was a white man. He wasn't. I wasn't with it at all. All I could do is cry. After Rosa Parks was arrested for refusing to get out of her seat on December 1st. Look, I'm not a champion of woman or anything. But poor, 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 poor little girl. She suffered only, only a way a woman could suffer. You're calling her ugly. They're calling her unwanted. She did something great and they're giving it to the lighter skinned person. You know? Well, imagine what that does to a female little girl. 
fucked up, man. It's fucked up. And the fact that this bitch knows about it and and, 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 and and just went with it. The Montgomery bus boycott began to you four about days later character. on December 5th. Speaks to you about her character. This is a deceitful bad. There's only a bad person could do this. You think I'm gonna? You think I, me I, I, as a middle class Dominican? I'm gonna take the glory of a, a little poor kid that did something great? Nah, that's insanity. That's just not. A, that's just evil. That same month, black community leaders gathered together and began developing a federal lawsuit that would challenge the Alabama segregation laws. Attorneys Clifford Durr and Fred Gray worked on the case that would become known as Browder versus Gale, a fight against Montgomery bus segregation. Gray approached Calvin, Aurelia Browder, Susie McDonald, Mary Louise Smith, and Jeanette Reese, all of these women who had experienced discrimination by bus drivers who enforced the segregation policy. The name of the- Now, take a look at Susie McDonald real quick. Since you guys, uh, since they're saying that it was a, uh, uh, since they were saying that it's a, uh, that, 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 that blacks cared about skin color because she was too light or whatever. Look at how light this lady is, Susie McDonald, right? She still got moved off the bus. They were not going to care how light this girl was. They wanted Rosa Parks, bro, for, for some reason. Smith and Jeanette Reese, all of these women who had experienced discrimination by bus drivers. And I think the reason is because they cared more about the light skin than the, than the whites did. This video shows you right here that the blacks of that era, the racist blacks of that era, care more about your light skin than the fucking white guys did. Because look at Susie McDonald. That bitch got kicked off the bus. She looks pretty white to me. Who enforced the segregation policy. The name of the case comes from one woman previously listed, Browder. W.A. Gale was the mayor of Montgomery at the time. The women agreed to become plaintiffs in the case. However, Reese later dropped out of the case in February 1956 after intimidation. She and her husband were both threatened. Months later on June 5th, 1956, the district court found that the enforced segregation of black and white passengers on motor buses operating in the city of Montgomery violates the constitution and laws of the United States because it denied equal protection that was promised under the 14th amendment. Of course, the city would attempt to appeal the decision, but those attempts proved to be unsuccessful as the Supreme Court support the district court and ordered Alabama and Montgomery to desegregate its buses. On December 17, 1956, the Supreme Court denied the petition for rehearing on the December 20th. The ruling was implemented, officially ending the Montgomery bus boycott on that same day. In 1958, Colvin moved to New York City after having trouble finding work in Montgomery due to her involvement in the overturning of bus segregation. In 1960- I have to pause it. So Colvin did the right thing, gets none of the glory, but the flack. Because people knew that it was her. Even with you shelving her, people knew that it was her. You see how evil the NWACP is? She still wore the brunt, the brunt of what she did, even if she didn't get the, the, the credit, thanks to Rosa Parks. So she had to move to a different state because they wouldn't hire her, because she did this. She gets none of the credit, but all the abuse. Amazing. On that same day, in 1958, Colvin moved to New York City after having trouble finding work in Montgomery due to her involvement in the overturning of bus segregation. In 1969, she began work as a nurse's aide in Manhattan for 35 years, retiring in 2004. Ever since Colvin moved to New York, she was largely forgotten about. Her family has joined the fight for Colvin's recognition in the history books. The family asked the National Museum of African American History and Culture for Colvin to be giving more mention as the museum does have a section dedicated to Rosa Parks. I've been there, and when I went into that shit, my girl got mad as hell. I mean, I was shitting all over Rosa Parks. When I, I've been there, I've been standing, I was like, man, this bitch a fraud. I said that shit loud. Loud. And you know what? Ain't nobody was mad at me. They were, people were just smiling and shit. Like, they were just shaking their head like I'm crazy. But yo, I was up there like, yo, this lady's a fucking fraud. This bitch ain't got, no, got up from the, from the goddamn bus. This bitch ain't even black kind of ruined it for my girl but hey bro i was saying the truth <laughs> Zim does have a section dedicated to rosa parks all we want is the truth why does history fail to get it right had it not been for claudette colvin ariel broder Susie mcdonald and mary louise smith there would have not been a thurgood marshall a martin luther king or 
or Rosa Parks. In December 2021, the juvenile court's records of Claudette Colvin were sealed and expunged. Montgomery County Juvenile... At 82, she still had a fucking criminal record for what she did. <laughs> they just expunged her shit. That's crazy. Now Judge Calvin Williams signed an order for the records to be destroyed, including all references to her arrest. Colvin is still alive and is currently 82 years old at the time of the video release. Decades have gone by and her name still isn't as prominent as it should be. Claudette Colvin sacrificed herself when she refused to get out of her seat for the greater good of the civil rights movement. Now as we approach the 67th anniversary of that day, Colvin is now getting the recognition she deserves. As a biopic about- Thanks to people like me, alright? Me, because I fuck with the truth. I must get the truth. I would love to meet this lady and shake her hand. That'd be beautiful. That's a reason to go to New York. I would love to meet this hero and shake her hand. Her beautiful hands. Look at her hands. She looks at my great grandmother. Her hands do. Her life is in the early stages with Anthony Mackie directing and Sanaya Sidney portraying the civil rights icon. The film will surely inform everyone Ooh, of Calvin's story. Oh my God. That's why this is getting played. Because Hollywood need, wants, needs to make money. I was wondering, like, why now this information is out there? Well, there you go. Now Hollywood wants to make money. I mean, but at least the information is out there, right? And inspire an entirely new generation. In 2013, while interviewing for Democracy Now!, Calvin was asked, what would she like to say to young people today? And she responded with this. Well, keep on moving. The struggle is not over. Every day presents a challenge and all that hard work that we have made progress as African Americans, we do not want to regress. We want to progress. There you have it, guys. There you have it. Black artists, activists, and historians. That's it. That's my uh, video for today, Fall of the Empire. They're coming for history. They're changing history, and you should know. You should know your history. And that's why I wanted to shit on Rosa Parks. That lady can suck a dick. Not my dick, but she can suck a dick. Fuck that lady. Claudia Colvin, you're a hero. God bless you. I fought for that. I fought for you, lady. I respect you. I respect the truth. I'm out, though.